for that. You know, I, I would say that song is a prayer this morning. Um, all of us needing encouragement and reminding us that there is a light at the end of this tunnel that we're going through as a society and God has promised something to each and every one of us as a whole. Um, let us come to our call to worship this morning. Um, for those of you on Facebook, on YouTube, I am Pastor Henry, one of the pastors here at Park Ave. We are now at the moment where I call to worship, which was written and adapted by Matthew Parson, Pearson Dog, Words of Ever, Real Summit. And it says this, creator of the heavenly lights, you brought us to life by your word and truth and the words of fire. We were made in your image, image. siblings of all O oh God and love with diversity, comfort or repair, shaper of new hearts with from corrupted ones. Show yourself now in abiding love for those in pain and trauma, for those who cannot breathe. Breathe, breathe life into us, us now. now. Moreover, the water is Comforter, repair of the breach, the shaper of new hearts from broken ones. You are here with us, guiding and inspiring the work of your kingdom. kingdom. The cancerous wickedness of racism has caused your children to suffer. Prejudice, discrimination, and hatred have led to brokenness, violence, and death. Purify our, our hearts, heart. tame our tongues, our tongues. We, pray. we pray. Come Holy Spirit and surround us. Let your new heartbeat fill our ears and comfort our souls as we rest in your divine embrace. We confess that we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have allowed the sin of racism to divide us in what we have done and what we have not done, what we have said and what we have not said. Give us, give us courage to repent, to fight, fight for righteousness, and to love, to love and embrace one another. Park Ave, you have called as many 
you are called as many gather as one body to breathe in the fire of the spirit, step into the light of the world and the worship of God, one who is three in one. And all of us say amen. 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 Let us continue our worship this morning with a testifying to the spirit from Michael. Good morning, everybody. Um, it's been a few weeks since I've been able to be with you guys, so it feels really good to be back and see so many familiar faces. Um, so for, for this time, you know, right now, I know that we are all fully aware of what's going on around us. Um, we did a few weeks ago um, a whole series on grief, and I was going through a very, very heavy grieving process. And I didn't really understand why. I mean, life was good, everything was good, but like I was grieving and grieving hard in my spirit. And during that time, the Lord brought me to Isaiah 61, and it was something I didn't really understand. I got a group of friends together to try to walk through what that scripture meant and what it was saying. And I didn't understand then. And going back and rereading and looking at it now, it's something that it, it just felt like it was so divine in, 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 in preparing um, just me and, and the people around me for, for this journey that we're on. Um, so if it's okay, I'd like to share just a little bit of what it says. And it says, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. He has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come and with it the day of God's anger against their enemies. To all who mourn in Israel, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes a joyous blessing instead of mourning, festive praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will, be great, like, they will be like great oaks that the Lord has planted for his own glory. They will rebuild the ancient ruins, repairing cities destroyed long ago. They will revive them, though they have been deserted for many generations. And it, it was a challenge for me back then to try to process this. It's like, I don't, I don't, you know, I feel like I'm in a good place. I don't know what's going on. And the word that I struggled so much with was that word enemies, because immediately um, I'm human immediately, you know, you think about people, people who have done you wrong and people, and it becomes a people versus people thing. And the Lord just brought me back to remembrance of like who he says our enemies are. And it's, we don't fight against flesh and blood. What we're seeing right now and where we are right now isn't a people versus people thing. It's, it's a spiritual battle. It's like a, it's a higher battle. It's a belief system. It's things that are so rooted in how we were like raised and taught and grounded in us. And so something that the Lord put on my heart was to try to find a way to build understanding and build empathy around the community that I'm in. Um, and just to try to extend that to, to people. So Justin and I, we um, have started these groups every Thursday night to just talk about race. Um, so myself and four other interracial couples get together and we try to have these difficult conversations and show that it's, there is a way to have difficult conversations across races in a way that isn't um, demeaning or devaluing and our whole goal is to find ways to honor one another in that space to honor the conversations that we're having as well as trying to come together to find out ways that we as a community community can um, continue to build a better future uh, for for the those coming after us you know I have two nieces and I don't want them to have to fight these same fights um, and so I am just grateful to the spirit um, for using grief and using grieving to speak and for make, turning all things into good and for allowing um, us to be vessels. I think that's the thing that I'm most grateful for is that um, the Lord didn't leave us without a helper. He didn't leave us without a comforter. Like he, he left and gave us the ultimate, like the, the best friend, best comforter that we could ever ask for. And so even though it's been tough and it's been hard and there's a lot of emotions, um, yeah, having the spirit there to guide and lead us through 
through those conversations uh, has just been really a huge, huge blessing for us. So that's just, that's what I wanted to share. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Michael, so much for leading us and, and, and letting us journey with you in this process. It's so important. And for showing us there are many different ways to engage in this work. I want to lead us now into our moment of centering down in the words of Reverend Dr. Howard Thurman, centering down, how good it is to center down and for us to move from the cerebral into the body in this moment. So take a moment where you are if you can. Um, and sit comfortably, feel grounded how you are sitting, feel rooted. Let your shoulders that might be up really high come down. Maybe move your, your neck gently. Take some deep breaths. In the words of Legendary activist Ruby Sales, ask yourself the question, where does it hurt? Where does it, where do you hold in your body tension or grief? Try to maybe move your body side to side. Yeah. Stretch your arms if that's what, what's natural for you. Take some deep breaths with me. Feel yourself come into this space, into your body. We carry the trauma in our bodies. We carry the racialized trauma of thousands and thousands of years in our bodies. So how can we connect with our body? And in the words of Resma Manakam, begin to metabolize that trauma together. I think it starts with just noticing our bodies. Try to hold that relaxation as Pastor Henra leads us in a prayer. Let us pray. Our provider, which art in heaven and who is here with us. Holy is thy name. We come as one on this Sunday proclaiming that you are a great God who is able to do all things beyond what we can ask or think. And because of that, we come proclaiming that we as a people will not grow weary, that we will not tire in the midst of what's going on, we proclaim that we do see the light that is coming at the end of the tunnel. And all that we ask this morning that you be with us, that you renew our strength when we get low and steady our feet when we feel as if we cannot move. We ask you be with those who are on the front lines of fighting for justice be with the young people give them direction forward that will cause change give them the courage to keep marching for a new normal as always we ask that you make our faith our protest that our faith will grow feet and hands so that our faith can move us as a people towards justice and towards love and towards new beginnings we ask that your spirit be amongst us this morning, that your spirit be in every word spoken, that your spirit be in every song sung, every pray, pray, prayed, every offering given, every scripture read, every word preached, that your spirit flow in every heart, listening by phone, online, or on Facebook. Finally, we pray for the families who have lost loved ones during this time. We ask that you be with them, that you comfort them, that you console them, 
allow, to feel, allow, allow them to feel your presence, to remind them that they are not alone. It's in Jesus, the great revolutionary name that we do pray. All of God's people say amen. 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 At this time, we're going to break into small groups for our greeting time, just so you can have two or three people in there that you're able to talk to um, more directly. So um, Marthame and, and Jarrett are doing our security this morning. We thank you both so much and we'll, we'll greet each other for about five minutes. So do what you need to do during this time. We invite you. Um, I got room one. Okay. As everyone filters out, it's say happening. again. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's happening. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say again. Good morning, Pastor Henra. How are you? I'm doing okay. As you said, this is a, this is a, a definitely a morning where the energy, you know, we're definitely leaning on God and the Spirit to provide some energy this morning in the midst of all that's going on either in the world and personally I would say so mm -hmm. yeah. yeah holding you all in prayer in prayer good morning Reverend Jordan good morning delighted to have you I appreciate the opportunity yeah, definitely man I know you're on the beach out there in Miami you know <laughs> as I stated I'm jealous but you know we all can't be so fortunate. <laughs> Definitely. I'm excited to see this uh, this group there that you're bringing, following us through this morning. Can you kind of explain a little bit about it to see you know, how do you all use it? And yeah, that's fine. So online, it works. Um, it's actually called Step Into the Circle. So that's the technique I'll be using. And it's mm -hmm. simple. I will say a statement. And if it's true for you, um, we will start with our cameras off, but if it is true for you, you will then turn your camera on. And so there's a bit of alignment where you'll see certain people agreeing to things. Okay, okay, I like that. Bonding us together in the beginning. So I'll start okay. at the beginning. Okay. It's so, it's so amazing. I was telling Jordan, we're always trying to think of ways to innovate and stay fresh mm -hmm. in our mediums of worship, however they are. And mm -hmm. this is really exciting to be a part of. Yeah. Pastor Darcy, yeah. all that you out and about yesterday, do you have any reflections from that? Mm -hmm. People need a space to grieve. There was so much anger and rightfully so um, in Southwest Atlanta yesterday. I got a call from a uh, the partner of a of a clergy person who was out there and I just had to go. Um, a lot of anger. People need a place and a space to be heard, I think. I hope that our site of memory is, is maybe a place where some of that grieving can happen at Park Ave, um, which is out, outside on the corner of um, Sydney and park in Atlanta, in south southwest Atlanta, not that far south, but really close to there, um, the neighborhood where Rashad Brooks was murdered. But yeah, Jordan, I was definitely in prayer for you um, as you, I mean, you lived in that neighborhood <laughs> when you lived here. Um, that was your name. I literally drove like biked past your old street um, on the way there because the police had blocked off all cars coming in. Um, so I was thinking of you for sure. It hit home differently. Um, but it's just, again, it was prior to our conversation yesterday, literally about to jump on with you and then this happened. So yeah, it's unfortunate but I think it's something that we definitely need to discuss and deal with. 100%. Hey, Kaya. Hey. Good morning, Kaya. <laughs> Q 
cutie. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, not sure. I feel the same way. <laughs> Callie's in Tennessee, so she's waiting for her to come back today. Oh, do you miss Callie? Flying so long. Yeah. Yeah. But you're getting all dad's attention, huh? Yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah. Everything okay, Marthane? Hey. We're holding for you. Finger. <laughs> One more minute in breakout rooms. That sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I'm sorry I haven't said hey, Alexia. Hi. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. You doing all right? Doing. Yeah. Yeah. Present. Right. You're trying to be. I'm waiting on the miracle. <laughs> right. But maybe that's my response now from how are you doing waiting for the miracle <laughs> that's a good one that's a good one right? yeah. oh, everyone's coming back in right. if you want to get back and then we'll go directly into the announcements Gallery view. All right, I think we're we're back. I think everyone is back. I've had an added visitor here, so we'll go directly into our announcements this morning. Uh, we do have a couple of announcements as always. On Wednesday, we have Meditation Wednesdays, uh, which Pastor Darcy has been doing interviews with our uh, with certain individuals um, talking about uh, different topics. And this month, we're looking at pride theology. Um, so we're those be, be online and aware of those that happen every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Um, also, we're doing uh, Fridays, Creative Prayer Friday. Um, as many of you may have saw this Friday, uh, myself and Pastor Darcy were out in front of the church this Friday, finishing up the memorial uh, that we uh, we have put together. Um, that she 90 percent of what she put together, ten percent of what I made sturdy, what we made sturdy on the last day. Uh, but definitely an idea in in conjunction, um, just a memorial for uh, giving those not only the members of Park Ave, but those who drive by, who walk by, us, a space to grieve, um, uh, to to remember essentially. Um, so if you're in the area, 46 Park Ave, Atlanta, Georgia, please come by, um, take a look at the names and the faces that are on the post boards, post boards um, that give you the time and space to grieve and remember those whose lives have been taken. Um, so definitely come by and see that. And one more announcement that is not on our bulletin per se, um, is that July 11th, we are creating another space for individuals to have a conversation about race um, about laws, about justice, um, an event that we've done the last three years called Know the Law, Know Your Rights. Um, and this year we've added a little a bit more to that, Know the Law, Know Your Rights, and then where do we go from here? Uh, we have several individuals, uh, one my sister-in-law who is the Assistant District Attorney in Fulton, who will be on, uh, my best friend who is a defense attorney, Chris Campbell. Uh, we have Dr. Lisa uh, Allen, um, she is the worship and music uh, professor at ITC, who many of you know, uh, is very active online and active. She'll be with us. We have uh, Byron King, who is my mentor, who is a director and an activist and a deacon over at Ebenezer Baptist Church, who I call my my second father, my, my great uncle, uh, who actually guided me into where I am and working with the, young, the youth as a young man at the age of 23. So he'll be with us as well. And then we'll have two of my other young boys, Matthew and Randall, who will be on part of the panel as well, just to give a perspective of the young people and how they're feeling during this time as well. Um, so it, it's an all around about conversation um, to educate one um, about certain laws and rights that we have as individuals. And then two, give us a space to have a discussion about where do we go from here and how we can make an impact um, going forward. So on July 11th, it'll be via Zoom, via Facebook, and you'll get more information about that as we come. But those are our announcements, um, and I'll pass it over to Pastor Darcy. 
Thank you. Thank you, Henro. We'll get more information about that event. It's going to be good. So last week, Pastor Henro reflected again his poem from our sermon the week before. So we thought we'd continue that. So this is a poem that I wrote for last week's sermon. Speak to us of pain unknown, multiplied over centuries of dreams and pain deferred, pain ignored, denied, and unheard, that bubbles up from the depth of the ocean, from the deepest well of the heart, from the embodied places thought calloused in years of hatred hurled, not calloused, but strengthened and still delicate to the touch, Grief from the heart, erupting lava into fire this time, the fire next time. The blaze speaks words of fire, the language of the unheard. Riot and rage tear down to build up, connecting and shaping this world anew. Fires speak of pain unheard and unknown multiplied. The, like the flame that jumps and connects, Despite a system designed to genocide and dehumanize, still you rise and rise, alive with every beat of the heart. The voices of the unheard now crying that never died, but survived, and you thrived. We are fighting for our lives and our hearts still beating. We all must be in the fight, following Black leadership, not retreating. But gaslight burns bright, showing into the night, producing false warmth and bystanders, fossilized hearts made of stone, singed, singed by hundreds of years of weaponized fire, cauterizes the pump that centers the white body. The hearts of stone fail to beat and skip at violence and pain yet unknown, burning crosses, pitchforks, and torches raised by lynch mobs. Light emitting from fire and phones, the already faint heartbeat fails to throb. Hearts of stone lay heavy open in burning chests and cheeks, standing by while fire burns, moralizing with empire's lens. Racialized trauma hardens hearts, and stone hearts hurt when they beat. Asleep to the value of human life and in denial of who we are. So we look but don't see and find ways to retreat. With every divine life lost, we lose a part of you and me. We are lost without Rashad, without George, Brianna, Tony, Amada, Tatiana, Sharonda, Daniel, Susan, Bernicia, Sandra, Freddie, and Khalif, and Philando, and Laquan, and Terrence, and Alton, and Mike, and Oscar, and Kevin, and Trayvon, and Tamir, and Emmett. There are so many more to name. This list is so long. How long? Oh, how long? The world should cry out as a part of our whole has been torn asunder. The veil, the temple curtain was torn in grief and pain, yet so many of my community of white others continue to rest under. Words of fire speak out and speak loud. From new language we journey and sojourn from head to heart. Tongues practicing speech and stone hearts relearning to beat. Not a language universal, but specific and distinct. Unique, unique, like all God's beloved creation. The new heart beating and drumming for justice, past and present, humanity comes alive with this sanctified vocation. The new heart transplanted and with it a new spirit. Take care that the body does not reject this new matrix. Take care. The new covenant arrives to us in the ontological black Jesus. But empire married orthodoxy and the message and spirit left us. The new heart demands witness and protection from violence condoned at the hands and the stone heart of the state. Take care of this new organ, it's precious and malleable. A new heart that beats true will never be infallible. But the drum beats.
beats and the heartbeats can be course corrected in time to match and to follow to the rhythm of true hope to the rhythm of real solidarity, to the rhythm of rich love, of self-love, of black love, to the ancestors redeemed, to the new heart beats and walks to a beat of a drum of black women, a love filled, a heart never colonized, the magic of a girl and the black joy of a boy, beats and rhythms in dreams of ancestors realized, in beats, in hearts transformed and reborn. Amen. We have come to our children's moment. And it just so happens that minds came in at the right time. Um, but our message this morning, I'd like to kind of ask a question that I don't know. You don't know how to read yet, so I'm gonna ask it this way. Of any other books that I've read to you, have you ever just looked at the cover and said, nah, dad, that's going to be a sorry book. I don't want to, I don't want to read that book. Have you ever done that where we just looked at the cover of the book and said, nah, I don't want that one. I don't want to read that one. Yeah. 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 Well, there's an old saying that is older than both you and I. It says, don't judge a book by its cover. I, mean, I think that kind of correlates with what Martin said. The hope is one day that we as a people don't judge individuals by the skin color, but by the content of their character. And our scripture this morning um, is looking at how we see people different, how we look at people different. Um, and in the scripture, it says we will no longer look at people with human standards, um, but we will look at them through the lens of Christ. Um, and acknowledging their worth and their value. Um, so our message this morning is uh, don't judge a book by its cover. Um, don't judge people by their cover, by how they look, by how they live, by how uh, much money they may or may not have, by any standard. Uh, but get to know people, um, get to love people essentially just for who they are. Uh, someone may not like your dress, that's okay. They can't judge you because they don't like your dress or how you do your hair, or who you love and who you don't, uh, what you follow in that aspect. So that's our message this morning. Don't judge a book by its cover. Um, let's lean on the words of Martin. Uh, look at the content and the character of people instead of the skin color, all right? Let us pray this morning. God, we thank you for the young people. Uh, we thank you for their spirit, we thank you for their energy. We thank you for their aspirations going forward. We pray that you give them abundance of wisdom, of courage, that as they grow older, they are bold in their conversations, that they walk in your path, that we as a church are with them, that we are able to protect them and guide them in the right direction that is based off love. It starts with love and ends with love. It's in Jesus' name that we do pray. We all say amen. 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 As we move into our time of giving, thank you so much for that message, Pastor Henra. Um, we have several ways that you can participate with us, you can journey with us, you can offer your time and your talents. We have many ways and um, that you can join into that work with us um, by participating, by attending, by being a part. And also, we, um, we need to run and keep the building open. Um, and so we have several ways that you can give online, you can text you can text us your giving, your gift at 470-300-1731. And you can text to give. Um, you could also go to parkavbaptist.com slash give and give your gift there. Um, again, this would be a good time for visitors to fill out that visitor um, sheet that we have to welcome you and to and to let us 
em embrace you like family. Let me pray over our offering this morning. God, the giver of all good gifts, we thank you for this day, for this moment, for this time and this community where your spirit hasn't left us. Your spirit is here, God. And we thank you for each and every person online or on this call right now. God, thank you for your good gifts. We pray that the gifts that this community offers today will go to the uplifting of your kingdom, the work of your son, Jesus, our black Messiah. Amen. Now we'll have a scripture reading from our vaccine. A reading from 2 Corinthians. We know that if the tent that we live in on earth is torn down, we have a building from God. It's a house that isn't handmade, which is eternal and located in heaven. We groan while we live in this residence. We really want to dress ourselves with our building from heaven, since we assume that when we take off this tent, we won't find out that we are naked. Yes, while we are in this tent, we groan because we are weighed down. We want to be dressed, not undressed, so that what is dying can be swallowed up by life. Now the one who prepared us for this very thing is God, and God gave us the spirit as a down payment for our home. So we are always confident because we know that while we are living in the body, we are away from our home with the Lord. We live by faith and not by sight. We are confident and we would prefer to leave the body and to be at home with the Lord. So our goal is to be acceptable to him, whether we are at home or away from home. We all must appear before Christ in court so that each person can be, can be paid back for the things that were done while in the body, whether they were good or bad. So we try to persuade people since we know what it means to fear the Lord. We are well known by God, and I hope that in your heart we, all, we are well known by you as well. We aren't trying to commend ourselves to you again. Instead, we are giving you an opportunity to be proud of us so that you could answer those who take pride in superficial appearance and not in what is in the heart. If we are crazy, it's for God's sake. If we are rational, it's for your sake. The love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this. One died for the sake of all, therefore all died. He died for the sake of all so that those who are alive should live, not for themselves, but for the one who died for them and was raised. So then from this point on, we won't recognize people by human standards, even though we used to know Christ by human standards. That isn't how we know him now. So then if anyone is in Christ, that person is part of the new creation. The old things have gone away and look, new things have arrived. So then if anyone is in Christ, that person is part of the new creation. The old things have gone away and look, new things have arrived. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Could you hear me? As I was intruded on being perceived as an intruder, my place of rest turning into my rest in peace as my soul silently slipped into the night. No people there to protect my innocence. I was proven through college, proclaimed praises to pull people up but was put down by a false perception. Do you see me? Or because of the color of my skin you see a criminal? Deserving quick executions, but slow explanations from a system designed to keep me killed. I sit behind the wheel, just as intimidated by the world as the world is. 
by me. Calmly begin, speak king, sensing tensions, peaking, seven shots, I'm bleeding while screaming, I wasn't reaching. Do you know me? Or do I become prey when I step into your territory? I wasn't a baseball player, so I didn't know that on my home run, I'd be going, going, gone, that's wrong. Because this life matters. But your silence on this matter is deafening. I was playing games when real shots rang, real blood stains, real pain, but it's all the same and I'm tired. I'm tired of being overwhelmed. Tired of shouting for justice, but seeing just ish. I'm tired of trying to catch my breath. All hate is kneeling on my neck. I just want to live. Let me be. Let me breathe. I'm a young black man doing all that I can to stay off when I look around and I see what's being done to my kind every day I'm being called to this parade my people don't want no trouble. We got it all strung on. I just wanna leave. God protect me. I just wanna leave. I just wanna leave. I'm a young. To stand all oh, when I look around and I see what's being done to my time every day. I'm being called to this parade. My people don't want no trouble. We got it all strong. We just want to live. God protect us. In your name we pray. Amen. Can you feel a brand new day? My name is Reverend Jordan Daniel Stewart and I bring you greetings all the way from Miami, Florida, where I am grateful for the opportunity. I thank my friend Darcy, I thank my friend Pastor Henra and all the community here for supporting in this movement, supporting in this new online way of worshiping. Um, and I thank you for the opportunity to speak truth in this time. So can you feel a brand new day? Second Corinthians 5, 1 through 17. In the 1988 powerful musical narrative about a young black woman from Harlem who seemed to be very shy and unfulfilled with life gets caught in a snowstorm while chasing her dog Toto. Diana Ross, AKA Dorothy, delivers an all-star performance in this hit musical, The Wiz. Dorothy meets people along the way like the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Lion, all with different problems. And Dorothy finds ways to help them. Together on the journey, they realize that they need each other 
to get to their final destination, which is Emerald City. Together, they face joy, pain, loss, grief, and victory all in this narrative. They even defeat one of their big, biggest obstacles, Eveline, and together finally meet the Wiz. In celebration of their hard work, togetherness, and liberation, the community begins to sing these lines. Can't you feel a brand new day? 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 Feelings. Feelings are oftentimes emotions that come up in response to something, whether it be action or whether it be word. These are oftentimes things that people either have a lot to say about or honestly really don't know how to speak about it, how to talk about it, how to engage in conversations around our feelings. As a practicing drama therapist, which is, which is the use of theater techniques for therapeutic gain, I am in the art of not only talking about feelings, but bodying feelings. Many of my sessions often start with the question, how are you feeling? So that is where we will begin today. I'm going to lead you in a brief moment of collective gathering around feelings. So what I'm asking right now is all those who would like to participate, if you can go ahead and turn off your camera. You will still be able to hear me and I will still be on with you, but we're gonna engage in this. This embodied practice is called step into the circle. I, as the facilitator, will make a few truths for myself and will state those out loud to you. You, as the participant, will have your camera completely turned off as you are doing now. Once I say that statement, if it rings true for you, if you agree, you will turn on your camera and we will see who also is connecting to your truth. There will be no words, just action. All right, here's an example. Step into the circle. If you, like me, love to dance. If you love to dance, you will click your camera on right now. And we begin to see who else likes to dance in the room together. No conversation, nothing. And now we can turn our camera off. All right, so it'll be interactive. I have a few that I want to run your way. Here's the next one. Step into the circle if you, like me, woke up today feeling concerned about the current state of our nation. If that's true for you, you can turn on your camera. We take a moment, we honor who else is offering themselves in this space, and we turn our camera off. Step into the circle. If you, like me, participated in some way during the recent resurgence of the Black Lives Matter movement, if you, if you participated in any way, turn your camera on at this time. And we're off. Next one, you can turn your cameras off. Step into the circle. If you, like me, have been personally impacted on any level by COVID-19. Awesome. And we can turn our cameras off. Next one, step into the circle if you feel unsure about the future following the pandemic. If that's true for you, you can turn on your camera at this time. We honor those who feel unsure at this time. And you can turn it off. Step into the circle if you have been impacted if if you have been impacted in a negative way by racism, sexism, or homophobia, if that's true for you, you turn on the camera. Thank you. And we're off. Last one. Step into the circle. If you desire freedom, liberation, or peace of mind, If that's true for you, you can turn on your camera. 
Awesome. I thank everyone for participating as we gather together to start in this space, start in a, a space of unity, where as you saw, there were people on this screen that have, have similar stories, similar journeys, or impacted in similar ways. The theme for this month is new language, new heart, new normal. And this centers around Pentecost, which is a period in time where recreation of the world was taking place. There was a shift, a period of liberation during Pentecost, a setting free, a brand new day. And so when asked to speak, the first scripture that came to mind was Corinthians 5 and 17, which says, so then if anyone is in Christ, that person is part of the new creation. The old things have gone away and look, new things have arrived. Can you feel a brand new day? This hope that all the old things in life, the old times, the old worries, the old destructions, failures, habits have all gone away. And as promised in the text, new things have arrived. For you, Bible scholar, you may remember a certain version that says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away and behold, all things are made new. I chose to use the CEB version because I wanted to make sure no one was left out of the text today. This text requires responsibility from all of our parts. So I read it again. So then if anyone is in Christ, that person is part of the new creation. The old things have gone away and look, new things have arrived. I asked the question, can you feel a brand new day? If someone, how am I feeling? I will see a describe in Corinthians 5, 1 17. My body is like this tent. I feel like my tent while on earth is torn down. I am growing. I am groaning from the troubles, the worries, and pains I feel in this tent. My tent, which is supposed to be a space of protection and this home of sorts has weighed me down, as the text describes. Since the beginning of the pandemic, I have witnessed my body and the bodies of many others be attacked in many life-changing ways. Anxiety around the constant increasing numbers of death, unemployment rates at an all-time high, college students experiencing grief around the loss of their educational experiences, and the shift of the new normal of the pandemic. I was honestly getting to this being a new way of living and shifting my tent in a way that adapts to this brand new day. A brand new day, and yes, I could feel it. I could feel the online teaching that I was offering to my elementary students was going to set them up for success. I, was the I saw the next Steve Jobs being developed right before my eyes because they would be able to sit in their future interviews and say, I started learning how to use a laptop when I was in kindergarten. I saw the advancement that this new normal could do for black and brown kids now having more access than, that, than they ever had prior to the pandemic. Even in the midst of destruction, like the pandemic, there were still glimpses of hope and rays of positivity for a brighter, new-aged world. Can't you feel a brand new day? Then came the shots. The foot pressing against the neck of unarmed black people until the point of death. The unrest of the country and the world standing with or standing around, lying down, fighting in protest of these injustices. The George Floyd TikTok challenges that were created and posted to make a mockery out of misery. The Facebook debate about what Black people should be saying, should be doing, should be showing, should be reposting. The silence of many white bodies who feel shame and guilt and choose to stay quiet instead of speaking up in honor of those around them. Simple trends as running in your neighborhood, which for some of us was our only way to be outside during the pandemic, became something I began to fear. I feared that like my brother Ahmad Arbery, I would be shot and killed while jogging for exercise to improve my health, to improve my life, to affirm that my life, my health life matters to me. Beating the statistics that have been placed on us as black people as having unhealthy ways of living. But even in one of the most centering, the most peaceful times like running, we have to live with this brand new 
day of fearing for our lives while running. Can't you feel a brand new day? Running, oh yes, just like two nights ago, where a young black man, 27 years old in Atlanta, Georgia, right down the street from where I used to live, was running away from the cops, back turned, and was shot and killed in a Wendy's parking lot. This brand new day where running gets you killed, lying down and claiming I can't breathe gets you killed. This brand new day where in order to sit in the comfortability of your own home, it requires random no-knock search warrants that result in black women like Breonna Taylor being killed in her own home. Can't you feel a brand new day? I could go on and on and on, but that would be reliving a trauma that has been placed on black and brown bodies in this country for centuries. Trauma is now being tested and proven to travel in your DNA. So what is this to say for the future of this country? When we kill people during regular everyday activities, what does trauma do to all those people that are connected to those victims? George Floyd was someone's father. George Floyd was someone's son, someone's friend, someone's mentor, someone's lover. And now what that body, what that tent represented, that tent that protected his community during the times they needed him most is now destroyed. That tent of Trayvon Martin, who, who maybe for his mother may have been her only hope to make it through her own life is now destroyed. The tents of the Pulse nightclub victims who for some in the LGBT community could have been that person that saved someone's life. Someone seeking a home is now destroyed. The lives of Eric Gardner, Sandra Bland, Tamir Rice, and so many more tents are now destroyed. So with these people now missing from our wider communities, old things have passed away. And look, new things have arrived. Can't you feel a brand new day? Can't you feel a brand new day? Of course I can feel it, but what is new about this? What classifies something as being new? What makes a new beginning when nothing about this seems new? There seems to be no hope for some to ever reach a liberated brand new day. As a new full-time teacher this year, I understood what a brand new day felt like. I came from jobs and communities that required me to do the same thing every day. Being a teacher demands you look at every day with the student as a brand new day. One of the students I personally mentor, I have spent time with prior to the pandemic teaching him about making a fresh start, teaching this black young king that if he doesn't get something right today, tomorrow is always a brand new day. Sister Mary Clarence and Sister Act Two spoke about it with her black and brown students. This is a brand new day, ladies and gentlemen, a brand new day. So when I'm asked, can't you feel a brand new day? Of course I can feel it. I feel it in my body every day when I wake up and get a chance. I feel it in the morning prayers that I have every day as a personal time to charge up my day. Of course, I can feel a brand new day when I see a new check come my way to help me survive another two weeks as an adult. I feel a brand new day when what I faced the day prior doesn't worry me the same way. I feel a brand new day when I saw 300 of my students graduate and move on to the next grade. But what's new to you may not be new to me. And Paul reminds us about this in the text as he was protesting, advocating for a brand new day within the church of Corinth. He reminds them of their past and where they have come from and promises them this brand new day in Christ. But this narrative of death and dying gets old sometimes. It gets old reliving these stories of agony and pain, reliving these stories of telling you why my black life matters, telling you, please stop killing us, telling you enough is enough. Because I know what the word tells me. And in all honesty, I get angry with God sometimes for allowing these things to be, for allowing a president who typically on his birthday, which is today, 
would be celebrated and honored by many, but is still refusing to speak against the violence in this country, I get angry. When I see racist people spit on other people, mock other people, call other people names that were not given to them at birth, it immediately takes me to the cross. And I relive the narrative of Jesus standing there and hanging on the cross, dripping blood from the crown of his head down to the soles of his feet, enduring scorching heat, sharp objects being used to cut his African skin and being called on many of names. Jesus was the tent, the ultimate tent. And God, we are promised in this book that we wouldn't have to endure the pain that Jesus did. That's why Jesus came even in the first place, to set us free, to make us new creatures, to be able to say, my old things have passed away. And look, new things have arrived and mean it from a place of liberation and peace. If Jesus suffered, then why do I have to? Why do my people have to? Why do those marginalized communities have to? And as a minister, I want to tell you, I don't have all the answers. And usually this is where a three-step process may go. But today, I'm not looking for a solution. I'm looking to make you aware and help you understand we still need change in this world. These narratives in the Bible are not aligning with the ways the world is turning. I was promised I wouldn't have to endure the pain that Jesus did. And no, I'm not physically being hung on a cross for the sins of the whole world, but what is the difference between a cross and a lynching tree? as the late Dr. James Cone stated, or the cross and the Pulse nightclub, or the cross and the running trail, or the cross and the Wendy's parking lot. In all of these cases, it ended in death. It ended in a tragic experience that shifted our concept of a brand new day. Folks, there is nothing normal about what's going on in our world today. Black lives and many others still don't matter. But then why would the promise be in 2 Corinthians that old things have passed away and look, new things have arrived? I believe that in the midst of disaster, in the midst of pain, and in the midst of anguish and despair, that there still needs to be a hope, a resource, a sense of concern in order to take steps towards making a brand new day when I cannot depend on anyone in this world, especially those around who are called to protect, to serve, to nurture, to care for, my soul automatically finds its way back to Christ, back to Christ's stories of triumph in the midst of adversity. This story of Jesus promising new life, promising a better tent in heaven is the hope that I have. I believe that just like Jesus, I too can speak truth to power. I too can use my voice to teach and preach and advocate. I, like Jesus, can use my hands to serve, to pray for, to help heal communities. But this will require work. To reach a brand new day, I have to make a conscious effort to see it as a brand new day. A brand new day that I can lift my hands and say thank you, use me. A brand new day where I can help communities that are in need, no matter what the world or statistics say about them. A brand new day that I can encourage someone, educate someone, stand in solidarity with someone, engage in tough conversations that bring about change. I can do something, and so can you. We all have the capability of feeling a brand new day. But how do you feel about this day in reality is up to you. I can't currently reverse any of the lives that already have been lost to injustices in this world. But what I can do is challenge those injustices by voting, by advocating, by protesting, educating, and so much more. I can be there to support my sister or brother who is struggling being Black in America and be a listening ear and an open heart to their pain. But then I can also take that pain 
and help make a better narrative for the next person that I might be called to serve. We can all do something so that our feelings about this brand new day don't have to remain in a place of pain, but can uplift and help someone. We can move forward. I believe in Christ. We can be that new creation. We can let the old things pass away and be prepared for the new things that are on the way. So I ask the question one more time, can't you feel a brand new day? Can't you feel a brand new day? I hope we all can. And it starts with us. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Jordan. Y'all better give him a hand this morning. Um, you definitely blessed us this morning. Um, as I started, you almost made me start shouting. Uh, when you ask that final question, can we see a brand new day? Reminding us that it starts with a hope. I like that. A hope that we can all do something um, to usher in a new beginning. I, I, I mean, that, that is right on point this morning. Again, we thank you for, for giving us a word way down deep. Miami, Florida, we thank you for being with us this morning. Um, and that is our, this is our time of response this morning. Yeah, and you can respond by uh, sending messages and text chat, text chat um, of your prayers and your concerns this morning. Uh, you can text that to us. And we're also collecting, still trying to finalize um, the poem that we're doing. Um, if you have that one line of what Pentecost means to you, what what this time and this moment that is happening in the world, what does it mean to you? Uh, continue to place that in our text chat this morning. Again, we think. Uh, Pastor Stewart for being with us this morning from Miami, Florida. We thank you for your message. We thank you for your word, um, encouraging us to keep fighting, um, that we can do our part. Um, and as if someone put it in the test tab and you, and you spoke to us, a lending ear and an open heart um, is something that we all can give if we can't give anything else. Um, let us respond at this time as Jill brings us a song this morning. Going back, I'm moving. 
not going back. I'm moving ahead. Hear it and clear. My past is over. You, all things are made new. Surrendering my life to God. Moving, As we invite Jordan to give our benediction, we want to say stick around after for second cup if you'd like to talk to um, each other and, and just have a really informal gathering. Reverend Jordan, will you benedict us? Thank you. Again, thank you all for joining today. Thank you to my family and friends that are present online. I really do appreciate you. And I really hope that we find a sense of hope, a hope in this time. And now the benediction, now go into the world that is too often unjust, where the God who created you, the God who loves you and empowers you to live boldly, live inclusively, to love boldly, live inclusively and serve creatively. And all of us together, we say, Amen. 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 Stop the y'all start the recording. <laughs>